Guys, Dragon Ball Super Episode 86 was a 5 star episode in terms of action. Android 17 returned and he went beyond our expectations. We witnessed just how mysteriously powerful 17 has become as he displayed his power standing up to God Goku. The fight wasn't the longest but it was perfect. The fighting choreography, landscapes, dialogues and stunning visuals really made the episode worth the hype. This was a special episode because this marked the return of Android 17. We had a pretty dope and classic DBZ style fight between Goku and 17. And 17's performance was shocking to be said the least. Anyways, this episode also hinted something that might have a huge impact on the upcoming arcs and also as to in which direction Super will go from here onwards. As a fan, I could imagine a lot of different interesting ways they could spin the Oob story and I'm looking forward to check out your thoughts in the comments. I'll now talk about Oob's part and it's going to be long but after that, I'm going to explain how Seventeen was able to keep up with Goku so make sure you watch the full video. Goku wanted Evil Boo to reincarnate as a good guy, and oob it is. Boo is someone who has existed ever since the dawn of time, and this oob kid is his reincarnation. Let that sink in. No fighter of ours was born that great or with such high potential. Technically he should have more potential than any of our Z fighters, he should have even more dormant potential than the Saiyans. Oob appeared in the last episode of DBZ and he was able to impress the majority of the fans with his little battle against Goku. Now we don't know where this last episode of DBZ will stand by the time Super is done as it might as well get overwritten or rewritten as you know Dragon Ball Super is taking place after the end of the Boo arc and not the actual last episode of DBZ. So, anything relating to Oob is a vital indicator as to where the show is going. In Dragon Ball Super, Oob was once mentioned before the U6 vs 7 tournament but that was very vague and didn't really go that in depth. However, a segment of this episode clearly reminded us of, of this legacy growing up somewhere in Earth, as Dende tells Goku that there's a genius boy with unbelievable martial arts talent, but he's not aware of his abilities and that once he gets a bit older, Goku should go and train him, as he's the one behind his existence essentially. However, he can't participate in the tournament, he's too young for it and is not skilled enough and all that. Anyway, so how will the story of Oob go? They could approach it in mainly two ways. Either they can follow the last episode continuity of DBZ, then eventually go past it or they could completely erase and override the ending of Dragon Ball Z in a way suitable and better for the story of Dragon Ball Super. It's just one episode of DBZ and I think it can easily be overridden for the greater good. In my opinion, they should override the DBZ ending simply for making it look more like DBS. Now, after all that happened, you could expect a bit of change than what was shown in the episode to be more DBS appropriate. I just don't think they should have to go through the pain of keeping in mind what was shown in just one last episode and not to contradict it in any ways, as that could limit the plot possibilities. Anyways, I have observed most of you guys prefer that they follow the ending of DBZ. If that is in fact the case, it would mean Oob will not meet Goku and others before the 28th martial arts tournament. So does that mean unless DBS has a time skip and surpasses the ending of DBS, we will not see Oob anytime soon or will have any significant Oob episode before the 28th world martial arts take place? That's not necessarily what has to happen. Look, Dragon Ball Super is taking place in between the 10 years gap from the end of the Boo arc to the last episode of DBZ. So it would only make sense if DBS showed us stuff that we didn't get to see in Dragon Ball Z. That is Oob's story prior to meeting Goku and the gang, his family, his village, how he found out about his power, how he dealt with it. Maybe he's a local hero and all that stuff, you know? 
Look, this story with Oob would be a low power thing as compared to what he have been witnessing regularly, but this could at the same time bring back that adventure vibe of the good old Dragon Ball days. In a matter of fact, I think DBS should do 10 to 15 episode mini segment only featuring some upcoming characters like Oob for example. This could also be a new generation thing where they can show the adventures of Goten, Krongs, even how Pan or Bula is growing up to be. Maybe a look at even 17's kids. You know many other shows does that. I don't know what it's exactly called but they stop showing the usual stories involving the main characters and highlight some new characters or others who weren't getting much attention before. Segments like this will also give the much needed depth in characters like Goten and Trunks. I personally have hard time loving Goten and Trunks because they just didn't go through anything. I have seen Goku and Krillin growing up dealing with hell. Same case with Gohan. But Goten and Trunks just seems like some undeserving overpowered fighters. I just can't get behind them if they don't add some layers to it. So about Oob, if they go with the DBZ ending continuity, in short, Goku can't meet him before the 28th World Martial Arts Tournament. In that case, if DBS still wants him on the screen, they'll just have to show his independent story. Now, the second option is to completely forget there was ever that last episode of DBZ. And that way, the writers can literally come up with any story for Oob. Goku and others can meet Oob anytime. Also, if they redo the ending, it'll be more appropriate, maybe with the presence of Whis and Beerus, or at least mentions of them. Krillin can continue his classic look unlike what we see in DBZ, I think, wish, and hope Krillin will not quit martial arts just after making a return. If they go down with this path, some of the fan theories might also be taken in consideration in regards to giving Oob a more fascinating story. We know Oob is born with potential higher than anyone else. So, other evil forces might want to get hold of him at an early age and manipulate him. He's born as a good guy but still a human and can be manipulated into doing wrong stuff. Basically some kind of story like Oob got into hands of evil and, and then somehow he comes out of it. There have also been some theories about how Oob can become a god of destruction as he will essentially become something very close to a god if he ever decides to march with Fat Boo. Even though these theories seem far stretched and sometimes just way too unrealistic, the writers can mix things up and work it out. I personally want them to start concentrating on Oob as early as possible because he has some similarity with kid Gohan. Gohan was also nervous and unskilled, but due to being extremely talented and having high dormant potential, he would fuck everyone up when shit got real, and he got angry. Sometimes I miss that vulnerable Gohan and I feel Oob can give us that feeling or vibe for a while again. Now coming to the Android 17 part, if you put everything aside, the fight alone was fantastic. The pacing was right, you could feel the intensity behind each of 17's punch and it's like it's just piercing through the screen. Especially the way he nailed Goku in the stomach. Now, Goku did go Super Saiyan Blue and it looked like Android 17 was able to give him a run for his money. This is what pissed off many fans who are rather concerned about power scaling. Now, I'll give a very short explanation here because I will do a separate video on Android 17 because almost all the fans are talking about him now. He is the trending guy, so if you want my full explanation, make sure to watch that. Anyways, in this case, we have to consider some vital points. Firstly, we can't say Android 17 is on par with SSB Goku because Goku was not being serious. 
Also, when Goku is fighting with his allies, he doesn't have any intention to cause any harm to them. Rather, he wants to test them. Also, at this point, he's not overpowering them, rather trying to outmatch them in terms of strategy. He could simply overpower and we would not have this argument. But even though they are not as powerful as SSB Goku, they are skilled. So Goku is not always getting the upper hand. Even in SSB, Goku can control his power, so we will have to use our common sense and assume the obvious. However, this is not to take away the fact that 17 has in fact improved significantly, even if Goku wasn't using full power. Keeping up with SSB Goku is a huge deal. This essentially puts 17 above almost all of DBZ. I find it acceptable because 17 kept training and he has enormous potential as even stated by the producer of DBS in a recent interview. When we first met Frieza, he failed to beat a single Super Saiyan, yet he was able to match SSB just with 5 months of training because of the potential he always had but never used. While 17 along with 18 was able to kill Z fighters including the likes of Vegeta and Piccolo in the future timeline, so he was way beyond Frieza. Since he is an enhanced human or like a cyborg, arguably he could have more potential than Goku and Vegeta. Thus, with training, he has become powerful enough to hold his own against Goku even though he can't defeat him. So I think we should stop being such bitches and just appreciate that non-Saiyan characters are getting power boost. Anyways, this was just the basics, I'll go in depth on this topic in my upcoming video. Anyways, what do you think? What are your expectations? What do you want them to do with Oob? Any major change or you think it would be better to keep things simple, like the way it was in DBZ? Comment down below and let us know. I'll break down Goku vs Android 17 soon. So make sure to subscribe for that and everything Dragon Ball.